Well. Personality Desi Jr. later got to impersonate on Here's Lucy. When I was 21, <laughs> that was a very good year. Ring a ding ding. His sister, Lucy, made it a family affair when they both appeared on the show. Aaron Sue, who can ever dig anything they say? Striking out on his own, he made his film debut in Red Sky at Morning in 1970. For that performance, he won a Golden Globe Award as most promising newcomer. Well, they're both dangerous, and like she otters. You know, Bevel May almost bit my lip off when he play spin the bottle. And when it came to TV movies, Desi often found himself in trouble, such as this moment from Mr. and Mrs. Bojo Jones. I'm pregnant. And again with Mia Farrow in The Wedding. I'm pregnant. What? Through it all, Desi was fighting an addiction to drugs and alcohol, but 15 years ago he found help through the New Life Foundation, a spiritual and self-help organization for which he is now the national spokesperson. It was there that he also met his wife, Amy, who often accompanies Desi on his national tours. Recently, Desi starred in the one role he never thought he would play, that of his own father, Desi Arnaz Sr., in the movie The Mambo Kings. I want you to come on my show. Do it for me there. Oh, thanks. It's a nightclub show. Oh, no, I, I mean the I Love Lucy show. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. When our Jennifer Vallopi met Desi at his home just outside Las Vegas, she asked him what it was like to play the man we all know as Ricky Ricardo. In Mambo Kings, you play your father, of course. I imagine preparing for the role had to be uh, quite difficult. What happened was I, I had to make a decision whether I wanted to do it or not. It was based on the story, but also it was based on whether or not I felt comfortable uh, doing it. And I went down to Mexico to a house where I grew up in that my father built that is my house now and started reading the book and I fell in love with this story. And because it parallels a lot of things that happened to me in my life and that happened to my father. Mm -hmm. And so in this house there are these huge cement walls and there's a, a lot of echo in the rooms because of this marble floors and these big cement walls. So I started to try to sound like him and the echo and the, the the memory of his voice in that house is so memorable to me that I knew if it if if it was going to happen I was going to know one way or the other and it and it and it was exactly the sound was the same only it wasn't him it was me and so this this made me realize that no matter what happened I knew that I was going to be able to do it that was the first step. Then I worked for another six months on mm -hmm. the accent and everything. There is a scene in Mambo Kings where you are standing on the original set of I Love Lucy and through the magic of, of film are facing your mother and doing dialogue back and forth in mm -hmm. the scene. Was it an emotionally draining time? Unbelievably liberating experience. Big fun, spiritually uplifting. Uh -huh profound, soul-searching, transforming experience. I became acutely aware of my parents' feelings. Okay. And it was incredibly liberating because you're no longer, you're not, you're not separate anymore. There was this, there was, it was a beautiful experience for me. Certainly some of the portrayals we have seen of, of your mother and father, essentially what we see is that your mother was a saint and your father was a villain. Yeah, neither of those are true. They were people, they were human beings, and they had problems. Who they were is who we all are, which is, if you could say, who your parents are. We're, we're all human beings struggling to understand the meaning of life. Do you think they each learned the meaning of life before they passed away? Well, what happened to me about 15 years ago is I went through a pretty extreme um, inner search and that led me to uh, take a, a good look at my life and ask a lot of serious questions about what on earth is life all about. And then I went through drug and alcohol recovery and both my mother and my father were invited to <laughs> come with me. Mm -hmm. And they did, which was probably the most amazing thing that could have happened was they were very supportive of what was going on in my life. And I think that they were helped tremendously by what happened to me, but they are not here. Mm -hmm. And I would only, only say to you that I think that we all are um, here for just a little while. And uh, they did the best they could 
with the time they had. You have had some very famous affairs in your life with Patty Duke and Liza Minnelli and all those sorts of famous things. Famous affairs. Well, and it, they were certainly much publicized and talked about, mm -hmm. and with all the success you had at a very young age. And here you are, um, living now, very happily married in, in Nevada, in, in a fairly modest home. Um, your life could have been very different. My life was very different. Why did you choose this life today? Because the road I was going down had no, no ending, no finish line, no, it had no happiness. And, and it wasn't just uh, other people and uh, that I didn't make the right choices. It was that I believed in certain things like self-harming uh, thoughts and feelings that didn't work, mm -hmm. like... Uh, my way of showing you how much I cared was to tell you how jealous I was or to be angry, to say, can't you see how much I love you? Can't you see how angry I am? Or to be worried, because I thought that if I worried enough today that then tomorrow things would, would be better. And in relationships especially, if I really liked you, you were in big trouble. Those emotions aren't unique to me. But I, 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 I'm telling you from my own personal experience that those emotions tormented and used to take me over. What was it uh, 15 years ago that made you turn your life around? For 15 years, I've been a student of a program called the New Life Foundation. Mm -hmm. And this is maybe a one-sentence thing that could describe it. It is wise to seek your true eternal nature mm -hmm. because time defeats all other ambitions it is wise to seek your eternal nature? Your true eternal nature, because time defeats all other ambitions. Is that something you live your life by now? Uh, that's the only purpose for life, as far as I'm concerned. And I, and I am working very hard on a daily basis to recover that. And you recover that by seeing what's temporary mm -hmm. and seeing that in your heart, you're, what you're yearning for is not something temporary at all. It's something eternal. Were there particular reasons in your life that you were unhappy? Uh, was it maybe success too soon? It's not a question of the success makes you unhappy. It's a question of thinking that success will make you happy. We are still being bombarded by the idea that happiness is out there somewhere. It's the new right. car. It's the new. It doesn't have to be whether you're in show business or not. And where is it? Yeah. It's inside of you. Can you give me, Desi, three words that define happiness? Yes. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Coming up, Bo Bridges.